was fulfilled through those wise men from the east coming to find Jesus, coming to find the Messiah. They were just the first fulfillment of this prophecy of how the Lord was shining his light to the Gentiles and inviting them to be part of his people. God certainly had shown himself to his Old, Old Testament people, the Israelites, but it wasn't until Jesus came to earth that God's power and love for all people became very, very clear. Our lesson says that when the light and the glory of God appear, then Isaiah says, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. <coughs> Certainly those wise men were the first fulfillment of that prophecy, but it doesn't stop there. The thing that caused them to come and seek Jesus is the same thing that causes others to come and seek Jesus. It was the light of forgiveness and also that marvelous message the message of God's love, the message of his eternal love, and of a home in heaven. The good news of everyone's sin forgiven is the real glory of God. God certainly showed glory at times to the Old Testament Israelites, but his true glory wasn't seen in the fact that he demolished the enemies of the Israelites. His true glory wasn't seen in thunderbolts and, and lightning that surrounded Sinai as he gave the words of the Ten Commandments, his true glory wasn't seen even his, in his creating, of the, uh, creating the world. But his true glory is seen in his forgiveness, in his giving his son to die for people. People who are unlovable, and people who need forgiveness. People who were heading for hell. His true glory is seen in God's forgiving and his saving people like you and me. People like Jewish shepherds and Jewish, uh, Jewish tax collectors. People like Roman soldiers. People like Greek merchants. And people, yes, like you and me. People who don't deserve any more from God than a pesky mosquito might deserve from you and from me. That's the true glory of God. The fact that God forgives our sins. Don't take God's light or his glory for granted. But wake up and see that glory, that glorious forgiveness that he has shown into your heart and into your life because you've experienced too. And if you really take to heart what it cost God to rescue you from the darkness of your sins, then you're also going to get up and shine. Isaiah addressing us as members of God's church tells us, lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar. Your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell within you. If you really stop and look at the varieties of people who are members of our church, it's really something to be excited about, isn't it? If you were to look at the backgrounds of the members of your own church, you know, kind of looked into the background, you'd find... Certainly there's people of all different backgrounds, different kinds of families they came from, different kinds of educational experiences, different kinds of occupations. You know that all pretty well. And yet if you expand your view, not just in your own congregation, but outside of your congregation, into your church body, the Wisconsin Synod, you'd even be more amazed at the types of people that God has incorporated into his family. People of all, not just different family backgrounds, but all ethnic backgrounds, national backgrounds. Within our church body, we have fellow believers, believers who call themselves Lutherans like we do, Lutheran Christians like we do, believers from all over the world. We have fellow believers in China, in Japan, in Korea, in parts of South America, in Malawi, in Zambia, in Africa in Sweden, in Germany, Russia, Ukraine, literally all over the world. Those are all fellow Christians that you and I can enjoy fellowship with. They're all people who've been called by the light of the gospel, who've been brought to faith, as gen just as those Gentile kings were who first came to worship Jesus. It's really a blessing as I walk around my, the campus where I'm privileged to serve at at Luther Prep. It's just a blessing to, to see all these different types of people that God has brought to faith. Sometimes in my classroom, 
I can look into the look into the eyes of those twenty some students and, and see there, literally, students from three or four different countries who've been brought by the light of the gospel to come study about their Lord. So, how are we tracked all this? Isaiah says, get up, rise and shine because of this. That's how. Get up and shine like a reflector. Reflect the joy and the happiness which God has in your own life. Don't be a grumpy, gloomy Grinch, but be a jolly, joyful Gentile. Be somebody who's excited about the gospel that God has given to you and the forgiveness he's given. Because if anyone has a reason to wake up every morning with a bright, shining smile on their face, it would have to be Christians, wouldn't it? You wake up in the morning, and look what God's done for you. He's given you another gift of his grace, another day of grace to learn about him, to learn more about him, maybe to share something that you know about him with someone who doesn't know. Another day to get yourself prepared for eternity. I'm glad to be alive, the Christian says. And because that, a Christian, Isaiah says, can have a heart that throbs with joy. A heart that just can't stop, but that wants to spill that joy out into its whole life. The church is given the light and the glory of the gospel to carry into the world. And I found it very interesting that when I looked at the sign that's outside as you were talking about a new mission statement for your church, I found it very interesting how well it fit into what Isaiah says to us this morning. He talks to us about how that light is there to nurture people to faith. And this mission statement that's being suggested says, our mission is to make disciples by sharing the gospel, which creates and nurtures faith for eternal life. That's your commission that God has given to you this morning, to rise and to shine and to shine that gospel out to those around you. You are to proclaim God's praise. And that means sharing the light and the glory of God. That means telling the people living in darkness that you have seen a great light and that you have a great light to share. That means telling that the world, the world that's dying of malnutrition, that you have the food that it needs in order to not just survive, but in order to live and to thrive. The word of the gospel. When we see what the gospel has done in the times past, how it's drawn kings and queens, how it's drawn paupers and peasants, all by the same love of God in Christ, we can't help but heed the call of God to get up, to wake up, open our eyes, and to rise and shine. Like an alarm clock, God comes to us this morning through Isaiah, and he says to us, rise and shine. I have some work for you to do. So let the wonderful things that the gospel has accomplished for you and in your church in the past be a tremendous encouragement to you to rise and shine. To wake up and see what God has done through Jesus and then to get up and shine as you reflect the love of Jesus to a world and to people who are living in darkness. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.